In this video, we take a look at simple authentication routines. The data used by systems needs to be kept secure, and this can be achieved in a number of ways. The most obvious is using username and passwords to prevent unauthorized access to systems. But what if the user forgets the username and password? There needs to be a mechanism for the user to recover a username and password. But this mechanism needs to be secured as well. It may be that the user has to enter their email address and then click on a link within that email to verify they are who they say they are. Data files should also be encrypted so the data can't just be read with simple text editors. Online bots are able to submit data automatically to forms, and this can be protected against using software such as ReCapture that verifies a user is human. Programmers should also be aware of the potential for SQL injection hacks and other methods used by hackers to access data. Now, in the GCSE specification, it states that students must be able to write simple authentication routines. Now, if we look a little bit further at the clarification notes, it goes on to say students should be able to write a simple authentication routine that uses a username and password. Students will only be required to use plain text usernames and passwords, i.e. students will not need to encrypt the passwords. Now, obviously, there's a number of ways you could tackle this in the exam, um, and we're going to walk through one of them now. So first of all, let's start language non-specific and just provide some basic structured English pseudocode. So we're going to start off by storing our username and passwords in plain text, as it said, in a 2D array or a list. Now, as I said, there's many ways you could do this. You could choose to store the items in a file, a plain text file. But of course, this would make your authentication routine more complex as you'd need to read from the file. So let's just keep it nice and simple for now. We're then going to set uh, a Boolean variable called found and another one called valid to false and also initialize other variables. And you'll see later on the technique that we've chosen why we've got these variables. Obviously, found's going to be used to determine whether a user that's entered their username is actually found. And then valid is going to be used to check whether their password's correct or not. Then we're going to ask someone for their username. We're then going to enter a while loop, and while we haven't found the username that's been entered in our array or list, we're going to ask if the username entered matches the current one we're looking at, then we're going to set found equals true because we've found this user in our list of valid users, and then we're going to ask for their password. Again, we're now going to check that the password they've entered matches the correct entry for the user that we're currently looking at. And indeed, if it does, we're going to now set valid to true. Obviously, we'll carry on going around that while loop checking different users, but eventually we're going to exit the while loop, meaning we've checked every user in the array. At this point, we can interrogate valid, and if it's true, then we can simply output valid user. Now, obviously, in a real situation, you would then allow them to log on to your system. In a similar way, if valid is false, we know the user hasn't been found in the array or their password's wrong, so we're going to output an appropriate message. So let's step through this now and actually turn it into some syntactically accurate code. Now, we're going to do this in Python, but obviously, if you're using another language at GTSE, you can follow the logic of the pseudocode and what we've got here and adapt this for the language that you're using. So firstly, we're storing the username and passwords in a simple 2D array, or with Python, as we call it, a list. So we can see we have three users, uh, Craig's user, and his password is password. We've got the user Dave, and his password is secret. And we have a third user called Sam, and his password is let me in. Uh, these users should probably receive some education on more robust passwords. But for the purpose of this video, this is perfectly fine. 
we're then going to initialize those variables that we're going to use. So we're going to say found equals false and valid equals false. And they will remain false unless our algorithm discovers a user and a matching correct password. We're also initializing another variable, which you'll see we're using later on to zero. And it's always good practice to initialize any variables that you're going to use. We then prompt the user to enter a username. So here we see input, enter username, and we're storing what they type in a variable called username. So now we set up our while loop and we want to go round this while loop while we haven't found the username that's just been entered. So we're saying while found equals false, because that's the flag we're going to change if we find the user, and while number is less than the length of the user's array. So we're going to carry on going round this loop until we've looked through every entry in the user's array or list, or until we know we've found a user. So now we start checking the first entry in the user's array or list. So if user's number, which is currently zero, so this is the first entry, if user's number equals username, then we know we have found the user. We now set found to become equal to true. And of course, now we know that this user exists, we input them to enter their password. We then do a very similar line of code. We now say if password equals user's number, and this time it's one, because we're looking in the second field across. We already know the user exists, but now we're checking whether the password they've entered matches. Again, in a similar way, if it did match, we set valid to true. We've set found to true, meaning we found a user, and now we set valid to true, meaning that the password they entered matches. Now, of course, if either of those things aren't true, then we're going to increment number by one and we'll go back to the while loop and we'll carry on going through the array or list each entry at a time. Eventually, we are going to exit the while loop and you can see from our pseudocode, we want to say if valid is true, then say you are a valid user and if valid is false, then say invalid. Now you could do that as two if statements or like we've done here, slightly neater, we're using an if else. So if valid equals true, print valid user, else, or in other words, print invalid username or password. Now obviously this is a very simple authentication routine we've written here. There are many different variations you could use, but try not to get too complicated. Get comfortable with one that you're happy with, because as you saw earlier on, the specification simply states you need to be able to write a simple authentication routine. So a quick recap then, what is an authentication routine? Well, it's a piece of code which checks if someone should be allowed access to a system or program and what level of access they should have. You need to be able to write a simple authentication routine that uses a username and password, but you'll only be required to use plain text username and passwords. You're not going to worry in the exam conditions about the complexities of encrypting passwords, which of course you would do with a real password system. And below is the simple pseudocode that we outlined earlier in this video for a very simple authentication routine.